right, chapter 12. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice, and all that you said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my youth unto this day. Here I am, witness against me before the Lord, and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken, or whom have I defrauded, or whom have I oppressed, or of whose hand have I taken a ransom to blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore it you. And they said, You have not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither have you taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found aught in my hand. And they said, He is witness. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that made Moses and Aaron, and brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now, therefore, stand still, I may plead with you before the Lord, concerning all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. When Jacob was come in Egypt, then your fathers cried unto the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and they were made to dwell in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, and he gave them over into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord, and had said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served Balaam and the Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve you. And the Lord sent Jerubel and Bidon, and, Ye and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you dwelt in safety. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, you said unto me, Nay, but the king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore behold the king whom you have chosen, and whom you have asked for, and behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord, and serve him, and will hearken unto his voice, and not rebel against his commandments of the Lord, and both you and also the king that reigneth over you be followers of the Lord your God. But if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you and against your fathers. Now therefore stand still and see this great thing which the Lord would do before your eyes. Is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord, that he may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for your servants unto the Lord your God, that we, we die not, for we have added unto our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, you have indeed done all this evil, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And turn you not aside, for then should you go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you a people unto himself. Moreover, as for me, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will instruct you in good and right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he hath done for you. But if you shall still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. All right, let's go back up here to verse 1. Now we remember from yesterday, the, or from last chapter, that Nahash, the serpent, had come out against the children of Jabesh, and Saul had heard about it and come out and with his, with some troops, these that were dedicated and these that were sent to fight, these armies, and they come out against Nahash, and they whipped him and sent him back to the house, and Israel had accepted Saul 
as their king, because he had, had wrought, God had given a great victory against Nahash into his hand. So, when we left off, Samuel was telling everybody, let us go to Gilgal now and to renew the kingdom. And we'll remember Gilgal was the place that God had the children recircumcised to represent once again the agreement of the covenant that he had made. And Samuel said, and this is where we'll be picking it up here at Gilgal, verse 1, And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice, and all that you said unto me, and have made a king over you. So Samuel's telling the people now, I've listened to you, and I've made a king over you, just like you wanted. Verse 2, and Now behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my youth unto this day. So Samuel's telling them, Ever since I was a child I have been here and, and been among you, and my, my children are born here, my sons are born here among you, and I'm old, and behold, here is this king now that you have asked for. Three, here, am, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed, Whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded, or whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I taken a ransom to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it. So Samuel's saying, Now stand up if anybody wants to witness against me and, and speak in front of God, the Lord, and his anointed, all the house of Israel, and speak your mind and testify, and I will restore anything that anybody says that I have taken for and they said you have not defrauded us nor oppressed us neither have you taken anything of any man's hand so Israel's witnesses know you have not oppressed us Samuel and done anything wrong five and he said unto them the Lord is witness against you and is anointed as witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand and they said he is witness so now, once again, Israel has agreeing and agreeing that this is the agreement. And Samuel saying, God is a witness against you, that you are witness in this day. What I said, and all these things have come to pass. And Israel, being his anointed, is a witness that this is the truth this day. And all these things are fact. And Israel said, he is. And they are witness themselves of this thing that God does witness against them if they say this is not true. 6. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that hath made, that made Moses and Aaron and hath brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. And Samuel's telling them, It was God who done these things. God made Moses, this one who was drawn from the water. And God made Aaron, this bringer of light. And God brought your fathers forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of enclosures. God done these things, not man, not any man, but God made these men that done this. 7. Now therefore stand still, that I may plead with you before the Lord concerning all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. And Samuel's telling them, you just stand right there. Well, I tell you just what God's done for you and your fathers and all his righteous acts. 8. When Jacob was come into Egypt, then your fathers cried unto the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought, your, brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and they were made to dwell in this place. And what he's telling them is when Jacob was sent to Egypt, and we'll remember Jacob was sent there with the 70 souls that went down there with him, and they come to Egypt where Joseph had done been sent because there was a great famine and a drought coming in the land and God had done prepared for Jacob there and Jacob went there and the, and the Egyptians made them slaves and brought them under bondage and God sent Moses and Aaron into, into Egypt and brought them out of that land of enclosures this land of traps and snares 9 but they forgot the Lord their God and gave and he gave them over into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, 
and into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the king of Moab and they fought against them. And we'll remember this when Sisera, this one who was arrayed for battle, the host of Hazor, this enclosures of the battle, We'll remember him. He was from chapter 7 of Judges. This is where that story's at. The Philistines, these drifters, these many times they've fought against those that have drifted from God. Verse 10, And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and served Balaam and the Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and we will serve you. And we'll remember that's exactly what they said. And they did and these they stopped serving their Balaams and put away these images and these lords that they had made over themselves. And this Ashtaroth, this goddess of fertility and these fertility rituals which they would perform, all these rituals which they had. And Ashtaroth is Easter today. We know we've learned this already. 11. And the Lord sent Eryabel and Bedon and Bedon. And Jephthah and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you dwelt in safety. And we'll remember every time that they did call out to God, he did deliver them. Even these four times here it speaks of showing the work of God, because God did do these things. Smiting, blessing and cursing, blessing and cursing, blessing and cursing, smiting, teaching as a child, a father teaching a child. Still they would not listen. We remember Eryabel. He was Gideon. Gideon. The sword, Eryabel, that contends with Bel. These images, these false lords you've made over yourself. And Badon. Badon. We, we don't had the story of Badon, but we rem Badon means to serve. And Yephthah. We remember Yephthah, the one who opens from chapter 11 of Judges. And Samuel, Samuel is the one who's given this message now and talking to us now. The one who hears God delivered you out of the hand of your enemies. All these did. Twelve, and when you saw that Nahash, the story we just learned, the serpent of the children of Ammon came against you, you said unto me, No, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. Before God was your king, and all things were great, but now, God has given a victory to Saul, this one who's desired against Nahash, this serpent, and he's prospered him, and now the people have accepted Saul for their king. They've rejected God as their king. 13, now therefore behold the king whom you have chosen and whom you've asked for, and behold, the Lord has set a king over you. Now, he's telling them, here he is, here's this king whom you've already chosen, you've accepted him, and you asked for him. And now, behold, the king, God, has set this king over you. Here he is, see. Before, you just had the yoke of God and had to answer to the authority of God. Now, you have the king. 14. If you will fear the Lord and serve him, and hearken unto his voice, and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and both you and also the king that reigneth over you be followers of the Lord your God. See, now he's requiring you and your king both now have to obey the commandment. Nobody's released you from this. Nobody's released you from this commandments of God. Nobody's released you from the law. There is no releasing from the everlasting covenant that God made with man. You're stuck in it. This is the covenant. And we're going to find out, though, that they'll make another covenant with them, with this king. They're going to make another covenant. But this covenant's going to be disannulled. We're going to find out about it here in just a minute. But if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you and against your fathers. Now, we know that God has done prophesied these things from the book of Deuteronomy of this day. That this day was coming in the day they would ask for a king. And what God say? God already laid it out in the book of Deuteronomy and commanded that this king make him a copy 
of the book of the law and put it beside him and meditate in it day and night. 16. Now therefore stand still and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Samuel's telling you just stand right there and watch this. 17. Is it not harvest today? I will call unto the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. Now you watch this. Today's your harvest day, see. But today, I'm going to call for thunder and rain, and God's going to destroy your harvest to show you that you have done a wickedness, a great wickedness in this sight of the God that you have asked for a king. God's going to show you just how wicked you are because he's going to destroy your harvest. 8. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. So God did, and he destroyed the harvest because you had asked for a king. And the people said unto Samuel, Pray for your servants unto the Lord your God that we die not, for we have added unto our sins, all our sins, this evil, to ask us a king. Now, God sent thunder and rain and destroyed your harvest. Now you understand that you've done a great evil, and now that you have added to your sins of disobedience to the law, this evil thing that you've asked for a king. And God gave you a king. 20, And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not. You have indeed done all this evil, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. So he's commanding them. That's all right. You've got your king now, but don't turn aside from God's law. If you turn aside from God's law, it's going to show. It's going to come out. And then God's going to punish you, and we're going to find out what was prophesied in Deuteronomy, what he's going to do to them and their king in this day when they do go aside, how he's going to take them and throw them into another nation and they'll serve sticks and stones and we're going to find that's exactly what happens. 21. And turn you not aside, for then should you go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver. For they are vain, because that's what happens when you don't serve God in your heart and then go after his law. You turn aside, you go after these vain things, these things that cannot profit, nor deliver your soul. For they are vain, they're no good, they're works of men. 22, for the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you a people unto himself. God's not going to give up on his. God's going to keep punishing them and blessing them. Because of his great name's sake, he's done revealed himself to all the earth. All the nations know how he's used Israel. He's proved himself as God. Through this one he has anointed, his servant. And he's proved himself, and he's not going to leave this undone. Why? For his own name's sake. And we're going to find out how the prophets are going to tell us that. 23, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will instruct you in the good in the right way. Samuel going to say, Far be it from me that I'll sin against God, though. I'm going to stay before God, and I'll instruct you in the right way and the good things to do. 24, Only fear the Lord and serve him in the truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he hath done for you. Now you remember God and everything he's done for you. And consider him. 25. But if you shall still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. And this is what happens in the end. This is the end of it. God does sweep them and their king away. Why? Because they did not follow God. They did not adhere to God. They did not go after God's law, God's commandment, God's truth, which he had made. But they made themselves another covenant. We're going to find out. And we're going to find out God's going to disannul this covenant. 
All right, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to chapter 13.